So recently I had the opportunity to um, do a delayed review on the Reolink CX410. It's their Color X, and we've seen that Color X in some other cameras. It's supposed to be this night vision, true color thing. Well, I wanted to put it up against the old Reolink 810A and then another camera about the same sensor size as this one just to see how it does that this is a Daiwa style camera that we all know and love now this one probably going to get to this one the next one so it's a totally different camera there so let's jump in and i want to look at this camera to see how it all stacks up and um if you want to see something with my test rig just Use the chapter and jump down to the end. I know some people have done questions about, hey, how is this rigged up and how are you doing like four cameras on one PoE cable? Well, we'll explain that towards the end because some people don't want to see that crap. Let's get to it. So we're checking out Reolink's jump into the color night vision world. They do have a much bigger sensor, meaning it can just, you know, drink more light or... If you want to say it sucks more darkness you could go that way as well depending on how you roll but this is the cx 410 and yeah nothing like the original like 410 of how it was set up and everything this looks much like the same case that they had in that 12 megapixel version except that one had this orange line around here this one i does believe it does have the vehicle and person detection built into it but i will check out when we find out we test it more um nothing really crazy about the lens i can unscrew the thing so the actual physical lens of it looks like there are some possibly is this from warm white leds these all four look the same and so it may not even have ir so interesting there we've seen that in some other cameras too so i don't really like the lights on all the time but maybe they did pair it with where when it sees like a person or a vehicle that these lights do come on so it does help assist i mean you just can't record something in pitch black you know that's just not going to work in for you know the realm of cameras unless we start to get into those four digits which we don't most of us don't have that kind of funds um there's a speaker and i think a microphone on the bottom of it so that should do the two-way audio i guess this is the microphone here now they do have the sd card option you can roll with that but i do prefer you know have this set up with their nvr um i like that they went with the same mount this is that toolless mount and it's not like their turrets where there's no set screw so this one you do turn it tightens it stays locked in it's not going to get moved around when a big storm comes by and yeah then you gotta go reset all your cameras and that sucks um this is the poe version it uses regular poe it should plug right into the nvr i probably going to take a guess that the codec is still not that great in this to use with frigate or blue iris out the box without some whatever workarounds but we'll see i, I don't know on that I do like that they included the caps this time. They're capping all the different plugs. I like to see that they've done that. They listen to the customers on that. Basically, one of these is the power port if you're not using PoE. And then one of these, I think this one here is the reset button. You think you hold it down for like 10 seconds or whatever, and it resets the factory default. So pretty cool that they have all those caps on there. And then they even put the little rubber deal on there the little rubber gasket just you know so uh, call, you always forget that crap up on the ladder and i'm like damn forgot the damn rubber gasket go get one so nothing else to it let's go put this up and we're going to compare it to a couple other cameras so to start out it is a four megapixel camera so don't come here saying well i need like this 4k eight megapixel because pixels aren't everything i mean it takes more light to feed all those pixels. And if you don't have a lot of light, you can't see the subject anyway. So, but this is being four megapixel, you are gonna get that 16 by nine, not like the five megapixels. You're gonna get that, you know, four by three kind of old school look. And everybody likes the 16 by nine. 
There's no IR on this. So I'll start out from the jump. If you have an area that is just totally dark and you want to do IR where you're not having a constant like floodlight running, probably not the camera for that location. But that's the beauty of having multiple models of cameras, being able to have that tool in the toolbox. You know, when you've got a lot of street lights or you got some other floodlight that happens to be there, this camera does work great for that. Now, speaking of the lens, it is this 1 over 1.8 inch. And that gets confusing for some people because, like, take a look at the 810A. That one is 1 over 2.49. This sensor doesn't have as big of a, it's not as a big of a sensor as the CX410. It's a bigger sensor here, so it allows it to pull in more light. Now, it is Power over Ethernet, I'm not sure if they have another model. I don't think they do. I don't remember seeing that. But power over Ethernet is going to be with their NVRs. And I do recommend using this only with their Reolink NVR. It just works kind of the best with that. Unless you went totally standalone and did like the SD card. I don't really recommend going with like Blue Iris with this, Frigate, etc. I know there are some workarounds, but that becomes just a pain in the ass. And, you know, when you have those other software NVRs, well, there's better camera options there with better lenses anyways that don't have the weird codec issues that you got to deal with now the web gui on this thing it's going to be that newer you know real link one if you've messed around with them there's no special plugins needed to run this um you just go through it's got all the stuff it's pretty simple not a whole lot here the reason why I did restart my whole like testing of this, I did have some footage and, but then it got hot as hell outside. And then I wanted to redo stuff is down in this advanced section and the latest firmware HDR. It has some HDR, which is high. It's at high dynamic range or some people call it WDR, wide dynamic range of other cameras. It's supposed to allow for being able to see in the shadows in bright light. Um, I didn't like it. It blew out everything way too bright. You'll see some of the footage of that. Um, the other feature I wanted to talk about here, this is the actual spotlights on the front. I'm not a big fan of those lights. They're always running all the time. On and I've seen them on other different cameras, different models, different brands, etc., it just looks like a cheap spotlight on the house. and But this one is a cool feature to that. You can change this mode to a smart mode. So then when it sees a person, car, or a, even a pet, and you can uncheck and change these. And then you can even change the time that, hey, I don't want the certain time range. Only when a person shows up, turn those lights on. Now, it does take a, you know, a couple seconds for the lens to kind of figure itself out, but then it will turn those white lights on. They're not really that bright, so don't expect them to go that far, but it does help out a little bit. So one thing you won't find on the real link cameras is... Being able to dig into all the different easy frame rates and everything, they have gotten a little bit better with it, but it's still kind of limiting like the iframe interval, you can't set exactly where you want. And same thing you can't, you know, on the substream, you can't, hey, I want to do H.264, H.265, or vice versa, or even like a third substream, which I guess that comes back to you get what you pay for. And I know some people do like to just have this on automatic. You can do that on other ones as well, but there's just... Yeah, there's a little bit more you can see in the Daiwa style that you can change and do everything you want as well as the cool feature of being able to do like um, a lot of them doing Substream 2. And the cool part is really even Substream 2 on some of them for great for Frigate, you can do 720p, which is pretty awesome. I would like to see Real Link kind of move a little towards this if they could do some advanced tab stuff you know i know it's a lot of stuff for people but pretty cool to be able to do that you know to have that power user setting there but back to the real link stuff i mean it does have some of the stuff you can configure but just not really a whole lot there so just know that going in 
Now, if you do want to use this with some other software in VR stuff, you do have to come in here and enable it. I did find that this is stuff is just disabled and it kind of throws you for a loop. If you go into the network settings on the GUI and go down here to server settings, and then you're going to find all the ports like the RTSP, the OnVIF, you want to do the RTMP because you want to use it with Frigate. Using the little workaround deal with GoToRTC, you're going to need to enable this here. Don't forget to do that. And then lastly, if you want to record audio, do make sure. I've done this many times where audio would be turned off and you're wondering why you're not getting audio. Just go turn that thing on. So we've got a couple comparisons we're going to do with the CX-410. So, of course, we're going to take and put it up against the 810A. These are similar in zoom levels, and this will give you a good idea of, you know, real link to real link, you know, this previous version of this kind of same camera. Also look at quality, et cetera, whatever. Now, for color night vision, we're going to bring in the Daiwa 5442. This one has the same size sensor as the new Reolink one. So it should give you an idea of how Reolink is doing their job of that color night vision. So we'll definitely find out with these comparisons together, is the CX-410 really worth it? So I guess that leads us to, well, would you buy one? Um, if I had a real link in VR setup, which I do, and I had an area that I really need to cover that had some street lights or some other, you know, secondary lighting that kind of ran all the time at night. Absolutely. It's a good camera to have in the toolbox for when doing the real link in VR. Is it something I would buy to add to Frigate or uh, Blue Iris or something like that? Mm -mm. No, I'm not going to do it. Uh, I got too many other options there that just work out of the box and don't have, you know, some lens issues, codec issues, etc. And yeah, because real link is still to this day, unfortunately, kind of want you to stay in their own ecosystem. And well, just keep it there. Do you want to do the MVR? Works absolutely awesome with it. Plug it in, rip and roar, it goes and it just works well. I'm glad to see they finally do have a night vision, you know, camera to, you know, complement their MVR because that was one of the issues I had when installing these various MVRs and locations. Just wasn't a great, you know, color vision camera and you really need the real link to go with the real link because they want you to put it all together. But yeah, here or nor there, enough about that. So 
it just really all depends on what you're doing this with and what hardware and what you're recording with, whether you should get one of these cameras or not. Now, lastly, I did want to look at it compared to the real Color X that we've seen on the Daiwa Empire Tech side, just to kind of see how it did compare there for funsies, right? If you do want to find one of these cameras, just find all the links down below. You know the drill. You can press all those buttons and grab all the things. I do appreciate. It does help out the channel. Oh, and let's look at my little test board that I did promise in the intro. So this is my little test build that I've used. It allows me to tie in some cameras all on one board. And then I just have some little attachments on the house. I can slide them right in. That way I can just go easily test whatever camera or cameras I'd like to use. Well, the issue I had was I only have one PoE cable there. And why does this matter? Well, some people have, you know, ran one PoE cable to one corner of the house, but yet then they want to add another camera and then they can't really get another cable there. Well, the beauty of this thing, and you know, I'll leave the links down below. They got a, several different models of these, is basically you can take that one cable and this one, I know it's upside down, but this is 25 watts. This is PoE+. Plus. Now, cameras, typically the IR on them, you're gonna, not going to pull more than like, you know, five, six, seven, eight watts maybe. So you just check your wattage, you know, on your camera. You could end up overloading this with IR, but I haven't had that issue yet. But then the cool thing is, is it's one PoE in, and then it splits out, as you can see here, there's PoE outs and you just plug in your cameras and rock and roll. And I don't have it plugged in right now, but there are even lights to show that it is you know, sending data out, sending power out, and then you also have the same thing on this side. It's a pretty cool little solution, simple to use. There's no configuration, it's just a dumb little switch inside that's just gonna take the data here and pass it back out, you know, through and back and forth. So yeah, pretty cool to, you know, you can add a camera on the side of the house. If you can find a place to put this in a, you know, it's not gonna, cause this is not rainproof. They do have some more expensive ones, speaking of that, that are gonna be designed to be out in the weather, but maybe you could put this up in a soffit or something like that, and then you could tie in, you know, a couple additional cameras without running a bunch of cables.